it's done. So if you're new to the channel, here is what has gone on in the past three months. In January, my wife and I had a conversation that was actually this long. I said to her, you know, we could sell the old van, buy a new van, build it out better, and do a really long road trip. She said, I was thinking the same thing. About an hour later, I had a budget. About two days later, we made the final decision to sell the van and buy a new one. I bought this van and took delivery of it on February 20th and started the build on March 9th. It is April 30th and the van is done. In many ways, this van is very similar to the last van. It is a uh, Mercedes Sprinter. It's a 2500 instead of a 3500. So I went from a dually to two rear wheels instead of four rear wheels. Um, the layout is pretty much the same, particularly back here. It's still two doggy crates. They're actually a little bit smaller because I made the last ones a little too, bi too big. Um, and a bed on top and storage underneath. In that sense, it's about the same. So it looks pretty much like the last one. Two big bays for storage, a lot of storage underneath. The, the supports underneath are a little bit further apart to give us a little bit more space. The bays are actually a little bit deeper. Um, and then the same queen size bed up on top. Man, it's two bays, one for me, one for my wife. And then below that long storage for things like stand-up paddleboard paddles um, and the two dogs crates that will go into beach houses and stuff like that. Uh, in that sense, it's about the same. Uh, construction was different, a little bit lighter weight, because that was my big complaint with the last van is I overbuilt it, so this time I think I might have underbuilt it, but time will tell. The first real changes that we made were electrical. We, uh, we built in a shore power plug so that when we're in a campsite we can plug in someplace and have regular 110 throughout the van. The solar system that we set up does not have enough power to run 110. I, I have two small 110 ports, well I'll show you that in a minute. But now we've got lights, switches back here. The other van, the switches are up by the door, which was a pain when you were in bed. And my wife has a 110 outlet right by her bed for when we're plugged in for her laptop. We switched to a Max Air fan from the Fantastic fan in the last van. It is more expensive, but it is way quieter. It also offers a lot more control. It's got like 10 settings compared to my last Fantastic fan's three settings. This is a Goal Zero Yeti 500X Lithium, and this is really what's running the show. It's a relatively small battery bank. I wanna say it's 46 amp hours, uh, 505 watt hours. It's got two 110 outlets, an array of USBs, and then 12 volt, which is feeding the circuit box or the fuse box in back. It's a relatively small unit. We're gonna see how it does, but so far the thing that I'm most excited about is coming in here is the power from a, a Renogy 175 watt panel that I am super excited about. Right now, I'm at 99% full and I'm still bringing in 70 watts. My big concern right now is that it's too much panel for this little unit. I checked with Goal Zero and an independent person with, with a, a high level of expertise and everyone is like, no, 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 that panel will be fine with this unit, but uh, it scares me. I'm bringing in 70 watts. I can only count on my, my Goal Zero Boulder 90 panel uh, the number of times I got 70 watts or more on one hand. So I've seen over 100 watts already, uh, and it's super exciting. It is a lot of power, a lot of solar for this little unit. Now, as I said, it's not a lot of solar. 175 watts, 46 amp hours is not a lot of power. But all that's being run through it are the lights, the vent fan, and uh, charging iPads and GoPros and things like that. Um, so our power usage is pretty minimal. The back half of the van is pretty much the same as the other van, um, except that I moved the power from uh, over on in the kitchen up high and out of the way. That's really the only change in the back half of the van. But let's talk about the front half of the van. The front half of the van is very different. 
There is still a swivel seat. We chose to just do one instead of two. For a little while we had been thinking about two, but in the end we decided to just do one. We could always change that later on. I added storage up here. Yes, I've already hit my head on it three times. I was very used to that being completely open, but we're excited to have that storage up here. And I, I built this with a couple of um, shelf brackets that I found on Amazon. If you try and buy that kit, it's like 400 bucks. Um, and I did it for about 50, which was super nice. We also added a table that uh, moves around. So it can be used here, it can be raised up and down or swung around, or it can be used on the couch. Yes, now we have a couch. Uh, this is the first couch I've ever built, and I'll tell you, it's not the most comfortable couch in the world. Uh, we need to play with it. I think it needs to be a little bit deeper and maybe have a little bit more of a rake to it. I didn't want to eat up too much space because space is really the key to the design of this van. Really, everything that we did in this van, from uh, the crates to the couch, is because of my dog, Eloise. She follows me everywhere. Eloise has early onset arthritis in one of her hips, so she isn't really good at jumping, and her hips hurt a lot. She also, as a puppy, broke a paw, and we think that hurts a lot. Um, she sleeps a lot of the day, and so we wanted to make sure that there were lots of places where she could just lay down and sleep. Um, so the beds are super comfy. She can come up on the couch and snuggle us. We even have a, a couch camp chair that folds out that will live in the back of the van. So we're in a campground, she can just lie down on that couch. So a lot of this stuff is based around Eloise. So, but we have a couch and the couch has lights over it. Um, we changed out the map of, um, of Alaska and went to a map of the Outer Banks. This comes off of here if you want and can be stored underneath. So this is all storage underneath. And then the other thing that changed was the kitchen. The kitchen. In the last van, uh, the kitchen started, I guess, about here because the power banks were right here and went all the way to the back of the front seats. And so, and it was much shallower. It was designed to be just wide enough for a two burner stove. So because of the couch, we gave up a fair amount of length, about four feet of length. Um, we still have about four feet of counter space, and, uh, but it's much deeper. And I'm super proud of how the kitchen came out. I should point out, from a distance on camera, this van looks perfect. What I tell people is that I used to work in the film industry and I learned my construction skills on film sets where things only need to look good from 30 feet away in one direction. And that's how I feel like the van feels. Um, but I'm really happy with the way this came out. This was just a nice piece of lumber that I found and some shiplap for the fronts, but I've got drawers that open and close and it's super exciting. And uh, yeah, I'm like super proud of my little kitchen. So power here when we're plugged in and more lights up here, should we need them? We'll need them. And then storage up here, like in the other van, there is a list of things that are getting done in the next build after our month long road trip. And part of that is, um, is cabinet doors for here, as well as a little bit more storage over there. And those are the things that have really changed. Beyond that, it's a similar van. So now, technical questions. Um, there is R10 worth of insulation in the ceiling, R6 worth of insulation in the floor. I'm not sure the R value in the walls because it varies in thickness so much, but it's all, the walls are Havelock wool. The ceiling and the floor is EPS foam. I still need to deal with insulation in the doors, front and back, and face those. But this was a big job and got it done in about 20 something days. So this is the new van, van 3.0, and you'll be seeing a lot of it. Some things to think about. I have a book, a new book available on Amazon in both print and Kindle, and it is uh, The Simple Guide to Kayak Camping. So if you've been watching my videos, you know I just published a video about packing your kayak. This is a tie-in to that. Um, it helps you figure out what gear you need, how to plan trips, how to pack your boat. A lot of the things that I've covered in videos all put in one place and in paper or digital if you prefer. And that's available on Amazon, link down below. If you're liking the content, subscribe to this channel. Also check me out on Instagram. I'm pretty active over there, adventure.otaku. And I think that's about it. I'll see you outside.